ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا we want to thank the brothers and the sisters for coming out to the weekend lecture as it relates to Ramadan and preparation for Ramadan and benefiting from Ramadan. And we ask Allah as we gel to allow us to reach that month in with faith and seeking a reward and in good health so that we may obtain as much benefit for our lives and the hereafter. With regards to my advice for adults, one of the things that we wanted to speak about is the individual understanding the, the tremendous blessing that Allah Azawajal has bestowed upon him for reaching this month. The mere fact that Allah Azawajal has allowed you to reach this month is a tremendous blessing and we should be mindful of it and we should go into the month of Ramadan with the proper mindset that we want to gain the reward, we want to gain the forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. The fact that Allah Azza wa Jal said in the Qur'an, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyam, kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe fasting has been prescribed for you, as it has been prescribed for those who came before you, so that you may establish taqwa. So the main goal of fasting is to establish taqwa. It's not to make you hungry or to make you thirsty or to make you tired or fatigued. No, it's for you to establish taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jal. So from the greatest tasks of the believer in the month of Ramadan is to seek mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal, seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's from the greatest tasks of the believer. And because of that, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمِ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever fasts Ramadan with faith and seeking a reward, his sins will be forgiven for him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever fasts Ramadan with faith and seeking a reward, his sins will be forgiven for him. So the scholars of Islam, such as Imam al-Khattabi, Afwan, uh, na'am, Imam al-Khattabi, rahmatullahi alayhi, he said, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, with faith and seeking a reward, ay niyatan wa azimatan wa huwa an yasumuhu ala tasdiqi wa raqbati fi thawabihi. That the person has the strong intention and conviction that he will fast it, believing that it's obligatory, and seeking its reward. So you fast it, you go into Ramadan, believing that it's obligatory, and you have the firm intention to obtain the reward. The reward for fasting, which is the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal. And he says, طَيِّبَةً بِهِ نَفْسُ غَيْرُ كَارِحَ, غير كارح لَهُ that the person goes into it with good feelings and he doesn't dislike it. So you go into, you approach Ramadan with good feelings, with the desire, with firm conviction. You don't go into it, oh, it's a burden. 30 days of no fasting, 30 days of this, 30 days of that. No. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Iman and Wahtisaba, faith and seeking a reward. So, you, spirit, you should have a spirit, it should be a spiritual up, uplift for you. You should be happy with Ramadan. Keep in mind, the Prophet ﷺ also said, إِذَا دَخَلَ Ramadan, The Prophet ﷺ mentioned when Ramadan entered, فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابِ الْجِنَانِ وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابِ النِّيرَانِ وَصُفِّدَتِ الشَّيَاطِينِ When Ramadan enters, the gates of paradise are opened. The gates of hell are closed 
and the shayateen are shackled. So Allah Azawajal is helping us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is helping us to gain nearness to Him. He's helping us to gain nearness to Him. So Allah Azawajal wants ease for you. Allah Azawajal wants forgiveness for us. If Allah tabarak wa ta'ala wants that for us, would we lower ourselves? Would we lower ourselves after our Lord tabarak wa ta'ala has informed us that He wants forgiveness? He wants mercy for us? So indeed, the individual that reaches the month of Ramadan but does not do what he needs to do in order for his sins to be forgiven, indeed, that individual is a wretched individual. He's a wretched individual. Because Allah Azza wa Jal has done everything that individual needs to gain. To gain nearness to Allah. To become elevated. Allah has helped him. But the individual hasn't helped himself. And because of that, you had in the hadith, which is reported in the Mustadrak of Imam al-Hakim and declared authentic by Shaykh al-Albani, rahmatullahi alayhi. And it's the known hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood, he uh, walked on his minbar. Or he elevated, he walked the steps of his minbar. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, each step he took, he said, Ameen. And the companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they were surprised because they didn't hear anyone make dua. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, we noticed something today and it was strange. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and they said, you, you, you said ameen, but no one made dua. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Jibreel approached me and Jibreel made dua. So my dear brothers and sisters, you have the best angel making dua and the best prophet and the best human saying ameen. The first dua, the first supplication that Jibreel said to the Prophet sallallahu whoever reaches Ramadan and his sins are not forgiven, let that person go far astray. Yani, what does that mean? Yani, Allah Azawajal has done everything to help this individual, but his sins are not forgiven? That means he's wretched. That means he's an evil individual. So Jibreel supplicated against that person who reaches Ramadan, but his sins are not forgiven. Because Allah Azawajal has done everything to help that individual. In, from encouragement, from uh, closing the doors of hell, from locking away the, the, away the shayateen, and the likes. So if he has not done what he needs to do to be forgiven, that shows that there's a major problem with this individual. And the other two supplications, this one was related to Ramadan, but the other two supplications, that if your name is mentioned amongst individuals and they don't say, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, that person is far astray. Yani when we hear the name of the Prophet ﷺ, we say, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And the last dua, the individual who reaches his parents at an old age, and they don't be a means of him entering into Jinnah. Yani, it's upon the Muslim to take care of his parents, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim. And that should be a means of you entering into Jinnah. So the person that reaches his parents at an old age, yani while his parents are old and he's still alive, and he doesn't fulfill his obligation towards his parents, then that individual let him go far astray. And the Prophet wasallam said, Ameen. Once again, the best angel making dua and the best human saying Ameen. There's no doubt that that dua is going to be accepted. There's no doubt that that dua is going to be accepted. So this is something that we have to contemplate. The true uh, spirit of Ramadan, seeking forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. Likewise, last week we had mentioned a narration, and we'll mention it again because some of the brothers and sisters weren't present. Understanding the tremendous bounty and blessing upon you, just for the fact that you've reached the month of Ramadan. The mere fact, tell the brothers, tell the, the youth to be quiet, please. The mere fact that you reach the month of Ramadan is a tremendous blessing. Just the fact that you've reached the month. And that narration, and we'll summarize it, the narration of Talha bin Ubaidillah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, reported in Ibn Majah, and declared authentic by Shaykh al-Albani. 
rahmatullahi alayhi. That two individuals had entered into the fold of Islam at the same time. Because of time, we'll summarize it. Two individuals had entered into the fold of Islam at the same time. And Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhu remembers them entering into the fold of Islam. It was known that one of them was more diligent as it relates to worship. This was known. He was known for his piety. He was known for his diligence in worship. And his companion was practicing, but he wasn't so diligent. And the one who was diligent, and remember they both came into the fold of Islam at the same time, the one who was more diligent went out and fought jihad and was killed as a martyr. He was killed as a martyr, which is one of the greatest ways to die. His companion who came into the Islam at the same time as him did not perform jihad and he lived for another year. And then he died thereafter. Not, not in jihad, sickness or the likes. So Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that he had a dream and in the dream he was at the gates of Jannah. And these two men were there. These two individuals who came into the fold of Islam at the same time, they were there at the gates of Jannah. Someone came out of Jannah and said to the one who lived another year, who was the one who was more diligent or less diligent? Less. The one who was less diligent in worship and the likes, doing the basics. Someone came out of Jannah and said, you enter. So he entered. Then after some time, someone came out and said to the one who was more diligent, now you enter. Now this is the one who was more diligent and he died as a martyr. So he said, now you enter. And thereafter came out and said to Talha, go back, it's not your time yet. It's not your time yet. Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhu woke up and he was astonished. He said, how could this be? The one who was less diligent entered Jinnah before the one who was more diligent and died as a martyr. So Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhu informed some of his companions of his dream. And they likewise was astonished. They were astonished. How? So this news reached the Prophet wasallam of Talha's dream. It reached the Prophet wasallam. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Min ayi dhalik Why are you why are you surprised? So they, they explained, Ya Rasulullah, this one was very diligent in his worship and he died as a martyr. Why did the other one enter in the first? And the Prophet ﷺ said, The one that entered in the first, didn't he live another year? So the Sahaba said, Yes. And the Prophet ﷺ said, And he fasted another Ramadan? And the Sahaba said, yes. And the Prophet ﷺ said, and he prayed another year. So he fasted Ramadan and he prayed another year. The companion said, yes. The Prophet ﷺ said, the reward between the two of them is like the, the distance between the heavens and the earth. Just because he lived another year and fasted another Ramadan and prayed, he was on a greater status in terms of entering into Jinnah than the person who died before him that was very diligent and died as a martyr. So my dear brothers and sisters, Allah Azawajal has allowed us to, inshallah, because we're not there yet. But Allah Azawajal, we hope that we reach another Ramadan. It's only a couple of days. The mere fact that you Allah Azawajal has allowed you to reach the Ramadan is a mercy. So Allah Azawajal wants good for you. What do you want for yourself? What do you want for yourself? In that regard, we want to remind our brothers and sisters of certain affairs as it relates to the tremendous affair of Tawbah. One of the greatest tasks in Ramadan is to seek forgiveness for your sins. For all of us to seek forgiveness for our sins. 
Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِهُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal says, repent to Allah, all of you, so that you may be successful. So our success in this dunya and our success in the hereafter is based on our repentance. It's based on our repentance. Allah Azza wa Jal says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا تُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَوْبَةً نَسُوحًا O you who believe, repent to Allah, sincere repentance. Sincere repentance. So it's not that we just merely repent to Allah. It's not that we just merely raise our hands and say, Oh Allah, forgive us. Oh Allah, have mercy upon us. No. Allah says sincere repentance. So it's upon a believer to understand what is sincere repentance. So that I can perform it. So that I can turn to my Lord. Seek his forgiveness. Seek his mercy. What is sincere repentance? That's one of the issues we want to speak about. And we'll give some practical examples of that. From the conditions of repentance is that, and it's mentioned by the scholars, that you stop the sin. You regret the sin. You make the firm intention not to return to the sin. That's mentioned in the books. It's mentioned in Riyadh al-Saliheen and others. Many proofs from the Qur'an and the Sunnah to stop the sin. To regret the sin. To make the firm intention never to return to the sin. Right. Unfortunately, you have, and I admonish myself, first and foremost, unfortunately, you have those who repent with their tongue and they do not repent with their hearts. May Allah Azawajal rectify our affairs. Those who repent with their tongue and they do not repent within their hearts. Practical examples of that. We know the dangers of the phones. The dangers of devices. The dangers of social media. There's some individuals, their weakness is something on their phone. Whether contacts, pictures, apps, Netflix, TikTok, whatever, Instagram, whatever. It's their weakness. And they know. They know it's their weakness. So in Ramadan, you have individuals from amongst us. In the month of Ramadan, they just avoid pressing on that app. So it's on your phone. Or your picture gallery that has that which is displeasing to Allah, it's on there. But in Ramadan, you just don't press on that app. Have you stopped the sin? Have you regret the sin? Have you made the firm intention never to return to the sin? No. You didn't delete the app. You didn't delete the pictures. You didn't delete your TikTok account. You didn't delete your Instagram account. You just avoid going on it in Ramadan. So the mere fact that you did not delete it means that you have the firm intention to return to it after Ramadan. How is that repentance? You didn't delete it. Likewise, companions. There's individuals that have bad companions. Whether it's brothers, females, the youth, bad companions, your bad crew. And there's individuals that in the month of Ramadan, and may Allah guide us all, in the month of Ramadan, they say, they contact that bad companion or that bad group of companions, and what do they say? It's that time of year again. I'll hit y'all up after Ramadan. What do you mean? So you've informed your friends, mashallah, you've informed your bad companions that it's Ramadan and they won't hear from you for 30 days. But you've also informed that you'll see them again after Ramadan. So that's not repentance, my dear brothers. It's not repentance. That's actually you playing games with Allah. That's actually you playing games with Allah. Because between humans, that's an insult. Between humans, it's an insult that someone 
someone does you wrong and promises you that they won't do it, but you see that, they're, no, they, they're still doing it. They're still doing it. So we have to stop playing games with Allah Azza wa We have to show Allah Azza wa that we truly want His forgiveness. An example of that, and we'll take some examples after mentioning it. The example of that is the hadith of the man who killed 99 people. The hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Sahih Muslim. We know the story. The man killed 99 people. He asked for someone who can explain to him Toba. The worshipper explained it and said, no, you can't repent. He killed him. He killed him. And then he felt remorse. So he asked about Toba. He was guided to a scholar. The scholar said, you can repent. Nothing is going to come between you and repentance. But you have to leave this place. He said, you have to leave this place. Meaning, in order for your repentance to be strong and sincere and consistent, you have to remove yourself from sin. You have to remove yourself from sin. So that murderer, and the scholars mentioned in their various books explaining that hadith, they said he wasn't like any murderer. He wasn't like, if he gets, if, if, if he gets into an argument with you, he just kills you. If someone does him wrong, he kills him. No, because he killed the worshiper. What did the worshiper do to him? He didn't do him wrong. He didn't fight with him. He didn't argue with him. He told him an answer that he wasn't pleased with. And this was a worshiper that was known in the city. Because remember, when he asked the people about Toba, the people said, go to that man. So this was a well-known worshiper in the city. And he did not allow that to stop him from killing him. So he had a major problem with killing people. But when he heard about repentance and the advice about leaving this place, he didn't say, this is my hood. I'm going to stay here. No one's going to tell me to leave here. He did what? He gathered his belongings and he left. Which means one of the greatest things to assist a person with Toba is to leave the place of sin. Or to remove the sin from your company. Remove it. Another fa'ida we take from that story because we know what happened. He set out and what happened to him? He died. He died. Right? Look how close death was to that individual. What if he procrastinated? Because we know. And let's finish the story. So he went out he got halfway and he died. The angels of mercy came and the angels of punishment came. And they began to dispute who should take his soul. They began to dispute who should take his soul. The angels of mercy said he was repenting. The angels of punishment said, which is a fat, it's a wonderful benefit for us. The angels of punishment said he's never done any good. Lam ya'mal khayran qat. He's never done any good. My dear brothers and sisters, that informs that not only was he a murderer, but he never did any good. But he did one good. And that was he was sincere in his repentance to the extent that he was willing to remove himself from the land of sin. So that action, and we know that the, Allah Azza wa Jal sent another angel in the form of a man, and that angel said, why don't you measure the distance between the land that he was going to and the land that he was from? And another narration mentioned that he was closer to the land that he was from, but Allah Azza wa Jal made that land far and brought him closer to the land of repentance, so the angels of mercy took him. So that action of him showing sincerity in Toba wiped away his previous actions. But imagine if he would have procrastinated. Because the only reason 
Notice, his deciding factor that got him mercy was what? That he was closer to that land. So if he would have procrastinated, where would he go? He would have gone to hell. If he would have procrastinated, he would have gone to hell. Another benefit we get from that is the fact, like we said, the fact that he was willing to leave. He left. So not only did he repent, but he did something to support his repentance. So my dear brothers and sisters, taking it back to what we said about the device or the group of people or the bad companion, what are we doing to support our repentance? What are we doing to strengthen our repentance? Another example of removing the sin from your company or removing it from your possession is in the, the long hadith of Ka'ab bin Malik. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And you can find it in the Riyadh al-Salihin in the chapter of Tawbah. In the Riyadh al-Salihin, the chapter of Tawbah. Where Ka'ab bin Malik did not go out for jihad and he procrastinated. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came back, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I don't have an excuse. I don't have an excuse. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he made hajar. He did not speak to Kaab. 50 days and his companions and told their wives to leave them. Yani, refrain from having intimacy with them, go to their parents' house. During that time that Kaab was not being spoken to and his companions were not being spoken to and Kaab said, yani, I used to go out in the marketplace, I used to go to the masjid, no one would give me salams, not even the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his companions were crying. They stayed home and they were crying. 50 days in this state. During that, those days, a king from outside of Medina had heard about what the Prophet wasallam and the Sahaba were doing to Kaab and his companions. And the king sent a letter. The king sent a letter to Kaab saying, you don't deserve this. Why should you stay here? They're not talking to you. They're not speaking to you. No. Come to us and we will honor you. The king sent Kaab a letter. Now Kaab is in the state. His wife is no longer with him. His family members don't give him salams. The Prophet doesn't give him, the Prophet doesn't give him salam. This is a very difficult time for Kaab. When Ka'ab radiallahu ta'ala who received the letter and read the letter, he looked at it and said, this is a test from Allah. This is at a very low moment in his life. Extremely difficult moment in his life. And now he gets a letter from a king that says, come to us and we will honor you. What did Ka'ab do? He read the letter and said, this is a test from Allah. He ripped it up and he burnt it. He ripped it up and he burnt it. Not like some individuals would have read the letter. Keep, that with me. Keep in their pocket. Look at that later on. Think about it. No, immediately. So that's a reminder for us. Anything that harms you in your deen, get rid of it. Remove it. Don't hesitate. Some of the brothers and sisters, a'udhu billah, they got a thousand songs on their playlist on their phone or their tablet. Now it's time for Ramadan. They know they should delete it. They know they should delete it. They say, but I've paid so much money for this. Apple Play, I've paid so much money. I got a thousand phones. I got a thousand songs on my playlist. Am I going to de delete them all? Isn't Jinnah worth it? Isn't Jinnah worth it? Are you going to procrastinate? Do you know how close death is to you? Look how close death was to that man that killed 99 people. He did not know he was going to about to die. So delete those, that play playlist. Delete it. Get rid of those companions. Don't say to the companions, it's that time of year again. Y'all going to see me after? No, don't say it. Say y'all never going to see me. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran that an individual will regret 
يا ليتني لم أتخذ فلان خليلا لقد أضلني عن الذكر بعد إذ جاءني I wish I didn't take this person as my companion He guided me astray after the, rem- the remembrance came to me So you will regret If you don't do it now you will regret So this is a very important point for my, myself and my dear brothers and my sisters Likewise as it relates to Ramadan and preparing for Ramadan. There is something that we have to be mindful of. And that is, if an individual has been disobedient, and may Allah Azza guide us all. If an individual has been disobedient, and now Ramadan begins, some people think that they can be disobedient And now Ramadan begins and now they should have a spark of spiritual faith. And they'll find love and sweetness in worship. In reality, the scholars of Islam mention, and from them Imam Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, is that if a person is prone to sin, It's their regular, it's their norm to sin. From the dangers of sinning is that when you finally do acts of worship, you don't find the sweetness. It's like you're spiritually intoxicated. When you're intoxicated, you can't feel anything. So it's like you're spiritually intoxicated. So at first, you won't feel the sweetness of the sin. Afwan, you won't feel the sweetness of obedience. So for one, it's because of your sins. Your sins make you weak and numb. So you don't feel that the worship at first. Because some people go into Ramadan the first day or two or week, and they said, I'm not feeling it. You're not feeling it because of your sins. If you're patient... Allah Azza wa Jal will allow you to begin feeling the sweetness of faith. So be patient. Because it's not the act of worship that doesn't have sweetness. It's you because you're spiritually intoxicated. It's you that's causing that weakness. Another reason, Imam Ibn Qayyim mentions, and he, the book that he mentions this, Adda'u dawa The Disease and the Cure. Very beneficial book. Very beneficial book and it's translated in English. Alhamdulillah. Another reason is Allah is testing you. Allah Azza wa Jal is testing you. You have some individuals that all year they're upon sin, disobedience to Allah, drugs, alcohol, music, clubs, fornication and adultery. All year. Spending money, spending time, spending energy. And now it's time to obey Allah. You give it three days and you don't find sweetness and now you go back on your heels. So you gave all that time, energy, and money to sin and now when it's time to be patient with obedience, you want to give it three days? Where is your sincerity? Where is your sincerity? So my dear brothers and sisters, it's extremely important that we understand this great affair of Ramadan, this great affair of Tawbah. We should not be those individuals. And I'll mention another practical example as it relates to Toba. We should not be those individuals that raise our hands in Ramadan saying, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, have mercy upon me. But within our hearts, we have the sin. We don't regret the sin. We have the firm intention to return to the sin. A practical example of that. And we're adults, we have children. And like I said, we raise our hands in Ramadan asking Allah, forgive us, have mercy. Oh Allah, forgive me, have mercy. Oh Allah, forgive me, have mercy. Raising your hands. Right? Taib. If one of our children, if one of our children had a tablet or a phone and we discovered that they were watching something they shouldn't have watched. Everyone with me? We discover it, we take the phone, we see it. 
We punish the child, we admonish the child. We punish the child, we admonish the child. The child begs us. Abby, forgive me. Umi, forgive me. I'll never do it again. I'm sorry. This, that. How children do. Everyone's with me? While the child is begging, begging for mercy from the father or from the mother, dad, forgive me, mom, forgive me. I shouldn't have done it. Then the father says, just thinks. The father says, okay, give me your phone. And the child gets nervous. Why? Why? No, he's still got stuff on it. So when the father says, give me your phone. And the child, why? Abby, why? Give me your phone. Abby, but why? Give me your phone. The father opens up the phone. Your son was just looking at it right before he came to you to beg. Is that an insult? It's an insult. That's the same exact thing that we do to Allah Azza wa Jalla when we raise our hands for forgiveness in Ramadan, but we still got the stuff on our phones, on our tablets, on our Instagram account, TikTok account. We have to stop playing games with Allah Azza wa Jalla. We have to be sincere with Allah, sincere with our tawbah. Make the firm intention to leave it off, never to return to it, hate it, dislike it, remove it from your company. Whatever you got to do, remove it. Another issue that we'd like to speak about is that some individuals, one of the plots of the shaitan is that he makes an individual feel that no matter how, because of our sins, may Allah guide us all, no matter how much you repent, you'll never get to a high level. The shaitan does that. Some of us, we were very strong in our Islam at one time. Now we've become weak because of our sins and the likes. So the shaitan whispers, ah, you, you could fast and you can pray, but you're never going to get to that level again. You're never going to get to that level again. That's from the plots and whispers of the shaitan. My dear brothers and sisters, it's possible because of your sincerity that you go to a higher level than you were ever in your Islam. Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi, he mentions in the, the same book, The Disease and the Cure, he mentions this reality. He said the scholars disagreed in this affair. The scholars of Islam disagreed in this affair. Some of the scholars said, if a person is pious, and then they fall into sin, and then they try to be pious again, alhamdulillah, it's good. But they can never gain the status that they were on before. He brought this, right? Even so much so, he said some of the scholars say, for example, two individuals climbing a ladder at the same time, going at the same speed. One of them falls back, but his companion continues. Once the individual gets back on track, and continues, can he reach his companion if they continue at the same speed? Can he? No. He can't. Then Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi says that his teacher, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi, he said no, he can. He said he can. Because notice the example that we gave the two individuals on the ladder, they were both going the same speed. He said, if the individual is sincere, dedicated, he gets rid of the sin, he digs deep, he cries, he feels remorse, he will excel faster than he was before. So it's possible that an individual gets to a higher level based on their sincerity in the act of worship. So my dear brothers and sisters, are we going to let this month come and go without being sincere, without repentance, without turning to Allah? We can be from the best of the Muslims after this month of Ramadan, based on what we do in the month, based on digging deep, thinking about our sins, thinking about how we wronged ourselves. Allah says, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا 
إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah says, do not despair from the mercy of Allah. Allah forgives all sins. No matter how grave your sin is, no matter how severe, no matter how horrendous your sin is, Allah will forgive it. We've mentioned before in the khutbah, on Tawbah, the athar, which is authentic, and declared authentic by Shaykh al-Bani, rahmatullahi alayhi, that the shaitan said to Allah, وَبِعِزَّتِكَ وَبِجِلَالَتِكَ He swore by the might and the graciousness of Allah. He said, I will continue to guide them astray مَا دَامَتْ أَرْوَاهُهُمْ فِي أَجْسَادِهِمْ As long as their souls are in their body. He said, I will, like, look, the shaitan is swearing by the might of Allah. He said, I will continue to guide them astray as long as their souls are in their bodies. And Allah says, وَبِعِزَّتِي Allah says, and I swear by my own might, I will continue to forgive them as long as they seek my forgiveness. Look at that. The shaitan is not going to stop. He's never going to end. But look at what Allah said. I will continue to forgive them as long as they seek my forgiveness. So my dear brothers, Ramadan is a month of forgiveness. Ramadan is a month of mercy. Allah wants to elevate us. If you do not get elevated, it's your own fault. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Ameen to the dua of Jibreel. When Jibreel said, whoever reaches this month and his sins are not forgiven, let him go far astray. So we are the cause of our own destruction or our own success after the tawfiq of Allah Azza wa Jal. So these are a few things that we wanted to mention as it relates to us preparing for the beautiful month of Ramadan. And we hope that the reminder benefits the believer. Allah knows best. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakan wa nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima kathira.